second, but we, we got to talk about it. This this name, image, and likeness thing. With, yeah. with, with, with you being an athlete who has been sponsored, you know, with you being an athlete who, I mean, I'm sure you probably still got some sponsorship type stuff sewed up. So just name, name image, and likeness. I, I just want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think super important for college athletes. I think what's been happening for college athletes not being able to profit off their name image like this is just really upsetting because like how can they not even at the very least like offer coaching services for example or start their own co coaching business when i was I, I trained uh local ski and snowboard teams at one point based off you know i'm a national team athlete i into strength and conditioning what why can't college athletes do the same thing i think especially for female athletes, those could be four of the highest earning years of their lives if they don't have a pro sport option to go to. Because a lot of sports, we female uh, uh, women's sports don't have that pro option. Like there's soccer, limited teams, there's basketball, limited uh, income. It, the WNBA probably doesn't get necessarily as many eyes sometimes as some of these college women's games. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a lot of sports like hockey, for example, that you, you have to pay for your own equipment in these pro leagues. So they're they're not really getting paid anything. So imagine when you have these eyeballs on you and you're making all this money for the school, how come you can't even at least offer like some sort of coaching or do some side of side hustle or just get sponsorships from your Instagram following? It's it, it's still it just it blows my mind. So I think it's a good thing. Um, for athletes, I also think because of, of this day and age, some athletes don't want to go to school. They can hop straight into entrepreneurship. They have other options of what they can do. Um, or they, you know, like the route I did, which is take online school while I was competing. And so the, right now, the traditional route is they have to go through like D1 if they want to then go pro and, and all these things. But what if you know, they're, they're valuing that free education less in a sense. It's like, you know, people make the argument, you're getting a free year of edu or free years of education. What if the, they don't want to go to school in the first place? So they wanted to, they had an option to start a business or, mm -hmm. or they went to online school or something different that year or those years of school are getting devalued in the athlete's mind. And so I think there needs to be more on the table. Um, and so, you know, as someone who had to learn how to get sponsors and things at 17, I think obviously there's some downsides, like things are going to have to figure out, not get taken advantage by agents and all these things. But I think it's figure outable. Like, I think they can do it with help of parents, just good guidance, good coaches. Um, I, I think it's going to be a, a good thing in, in the long run.